Hi, Peace Seminar students. Um, happy Tuesday or Wednesday to all of you, uh, depending on when you're watching this video. Can't wait to see you all in person on Thursday. Um, what today's video is going to be covering is Raven, which is our evaluation tool for credibility of sources. And so um, throughout the year this year, we're going to use Raven uh, not only while we're reading sources and uh, reading arguments to see if that use of credibility is useful, but we'll also be using it whenever we're conducting research to ensure our information is coming from a strong place that is fact-based and uh, it doesn't contain bias and all that other sort of stuff, right? We don't want to be using fake news. So our goals for today are for you to interpret and understand the acronym RAVEN and for you to use some of my RAVEN resources that I provide for you in the slideshow to uh, look at some sources and evaluate their credibility. Um, there's an assignment, it's a group activity at the end of the lesson today called Who Fact Checks the Fact Checkers? Um, and you're gonna be tasked uh, with a group of three or four people to examine six different sources and explain in one paragraph what makes them credible or not. And Raven, what I'm gonna go over here in just a minute, is going to be how you get there, is going to be how you get that explanation out. Now, for some of us, this might look familiar. You might have done something similar to this in uh, SEM 10 or SEM 9, depending on where you're coming from, or maybe even a different English class. But again, what RAVEN is, it's an acronym, and it's used to evaluate the source's credibility. Now, each letter in RAVEN will represent a different element of a source that we're going to look at and look into thoroughly to explain whether that source is credible. Uh, so you can see there, the R stands for reputation. The A is the ability to observe. V means vested interest. E is expertise. And N is neutrality or neutral language. And so we're going to go into each one of these. I'll provide an example um, and I'll provide you with some resources and then you will try it out in your groups. So for uh, the R in Raven, um, the R stands for reputation. And as we're looking into the reputation of a source, we want to know is what's its reputation, right? As you define reputation, what uh, do people view about this source collectively? What groups view the source positively, negatively? Is this source in a position of authority? Is this source a social media site, a news website, a government website, or a scholarly publication? Generally speaking, the social media sites and popular news sites are going to be lower reputable or low reputation than government sites and scholarly sites. Uh, we like to kind of look at tiers of sources, and I'll go into this stuff later on, but our most reputable tiered sources are going to be up here towards the top, right? Our peer-reviewed articles, our scholarly articles, our government websites and reports and research. And then the stuff that we're going to have to use Raven for mostly are going to be our tier three and tier four sources. So newspapers, uh, online sources, online publications, uh, in agenda-driven agenda pieces, right? We might not be sure whether they're credible or not. The first resource I want to provide for you is the media bias chart. And so you'll use this throughout the year, and you can use this on your current events as well to help determine whether or not your current events come from a reputable source. Um, so you can click in. You can see that there is an interactive media bias chart. I also have this image on the slide. Uh, essentially, how this chart works is um, the stuff towards the top in the middle uh, tends to be less biased uh, when it comes to their political bias. And the stuff down here towards the edges, um, the right-hand side tends to be right-leaning or conservative-leaning, and the left-hand side tends to be uh, liberal leaning, uh, democratic leaning, social, uh, socialist leaning uh, publications. And so we uh, want to look first at the reputation of these sources by using our media bias chart to determine, are they up here? Are they in this range? Or might they have some sort of left or right leaning bias? Also, towards the bottom here, these are normally things that might have factually incorrect information. And then the higher we go towards the top, uh, that's the more fact based uh, sources of information. My favorites are AP, uh, Reuters, um, NPR is definitely a favorite of mine as well. I also like The Economist for economic news. Um, and so go ahead and click into this media bias chart. Uh, you can kind of look at it here if you're ever in question on whether or not um, a certain source or website, um, it's a popular website you might have heard of, uh, it might have some sort of bias or might have some sort of reputation, reputation associated with it. Okay. Let's move on to A for the ability to observe, right? This is the idea of 
did the author or authors observe the information they're reporting on themselves or are they just restating information from somebody else, right? Does the author have access to reliable information and how do we know? Is this just a reporter reporting on what happened yesterday or was this person actually there that witnessed the event? Obviously, the higher a person's ability to observe an event or a phenomenon or something they're reporting on, the uh, more reliable, the more credible they're going to be. So questions I ask myself here are, did the author actually observe the event or conduct the study or are they just reporting on it? Is the information recent uh, from recent studies or uh, is it from stuff that's in the past? Did the author utilize any special tools to measure data or do they have any access to things that might give them um, the tools to observe something or observe a phenomenon? So an example here is uh, flat earthers versus people that maybe work for NASA or astronauts, right? You can see here B.O.B. said the cities in the back, B.O.B. is a rapper, by the way. He said the cities in the background are approximately 16 miles apart. Where is the curve? Please explain this, right? So he's a flat earther. He's supporting the flat earth theory, um, but he does not have the ability to observe the earth from outside uh, of the earth, right? He's on the earth, so obviously he might not see the curve. Versus our astronaut here, right? Show you the curve. Here you go, B.O.B. He actually tweeted at him and he said, one full orbit around the earth, maybe donate your funds to Puerto Rico relief instead of being a flat earther, right? He has the ability to observe as a specialist, as a NASA astronaut, that the earth is spherical, that the earth is round, and because he can go up into space and view it, that increased ability to observe makes him more credible. Another example here is maybe um, some COVID people, um, the COVID people who think that it's a lie or it's not a real thing, right? They don't necessarily have the ability to, to observe COVID uh, in person through microscope. Um, they are not um, epidemiologists, right? They are not doctors who get to see people on the front lines struggling with the symptoms of COVID every day. And so obviously they do not have the ability to observe uh, as much as a medical professional might. Okay, we're moving into our V for Raven, which is vested interest, right? And this one's kind of interesting. Um, when we think of vested interest, this is the idea of does the person sharing the information or making the argument have something to gain from influencing us, right? There's always going to be some level of vested interest, but we just need to make sure it's relatively minor before we can say, yes, this source is credible. So the questions I ask myself when I'm examining vested interest in uh, an article or a source is, does the author have a personal stake? Would they have anything to gain like money, fame, power, political gain or political favors by lying or by maybe telling the truth, right? Do they have something to gain from trying to influence us in one way or another? And then lastly, I kind of ask myself, what reasons might they have for trying to convince me? That might help me get to a vested interest a little bit here. And so an example I can think, uh, you can see this political cartoon here, this uh, store person who sells bomb shelters, they slapped up a sign that says apocalypse is near, right? The reason for them communicating that is because they have something to gain if there is an apocalypse. They sell bomb shelters, right? They have money to gain. They have power to gain from trying to influence us that an apocalypse might happen. Or, yes, this is a real ad. These baseball stars pick camels for flavor and for mildness, right? I doubt these baseball stars are smoking uh, from the past, were smoking frequently because they were professional athletes. Now, they might have smoked here and there. However, um, I doubt that they would endorse this product, cigarettes, which cause harm to the body, if they weren't receiving some sort of funding for endorsing the product from Camel, right? Um, so thinking about vested interest is always interesting. Why might someone be trying to influence me in some sort of way? What might they seek to gain? All right, we are almost done with Raven. Uh, we are on to the E in Raven, and the E stands for expertise, right? We're looking at the author in particular here when we're examining a source. Does the author have specialized knowledge on the topic or event. What makes the author an expert to report on the thing that they're talking about or to make the argument that they're making, right? Does the evidence come from the from an author that has expertise on the topic of, or event? So sometimes in our uh, 
popular sources, they will cite a doctor or they'll cite a philosopher or a psychologist, right? That's good because that person does have expertise where the journalist might not, but you need to look into who those people are. Do they actually have expertise in a related field, right? Is their expertise relevant to what they're talking about? This isn't a foot doctor talking about the brain, right? That would be an irrelevant use of an expert. While they're still a doctor, they don't specialize in the brain. They specialize on the foot. So making sure that their expertise are relevant to what they're communicating is going to be essential here as well. And then one last thing as we start to get into scholarly research, we can look into has the author been published in the past? Look at their previous works um, and that's going to help to develop them as an expert in that field. And so as we're thinking about expert degrees and the relevancy of someone's expertise uh, in relation to a topic, um, we like to think of it like this, right? These are going to be our lower level experts, people with certificates or diplomas, an associate's degree is attained after two years of college, a bachelor's degree after four years of college, a master's degree is both four years for a bachelor's and two to three years of additional work. And then lastly, a doctorate degree is going to be one of our highest levels for expertise. These are going to be people with PhDs or MDs, uh, medical doctors. They're often in school for, you know, 8, 10, 12, 15 years to, to attain that level of expertise on a topic. So they're going to tend to have more credibility than our people down here at the end. So if we're thinking of levels of credibility, we can look at it that way. But again, the most important thing to consider is whatever they're reporting on, is their expertise or is their background in a related field, right? So if we have an economist person who specializes in the economy reporting on um, a person's uh, brain psychology, they're not going to be an expert in that field, right? They're not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. They're an economist. If they're speaking about the economy, that would be great. That would be relevant. But if they're being used as a source of expertise for something that they don't specialize in, we're going to say, nope, that person isn't an expert in that field. And they would fail the E in Raven when it comes to their credibility. Okay, moving on to the end in my final part of Raven is neutrality. Is the author or source neutral or is their bias evident in their writing, in their language, in their titles of their articles, right? Is the media site fact-based or is it more opinionated? Does the media site have a political bias in some way and have a reason to try to influence us to be more conservative leaning or more liberal leaning on a topic? And Lastly here, I think the easiest way to detect it is looking for that charged or biased language within an article. And so another thing, going back to the R and Raven here, another thing that can help us with neutrality is using our media bias chart and really looking for that charged language, right? We know that Breitbart and, and uh, Fox News and some of these right-leaning sources are going to have a reason in the Daily Wire, right? They're going to have a reason to influence us and they're going to have biases for the right-hand side. And the same goes for the left, right? Patriobiotics and um, the alternate and forward progressives, right? Those are going to be our super left-leaning sources, and they're going to have a reason to try to interject their political bias. And so we want to like seek those out. We want to look at the source as a whole here using this chart. And then we also want to look within the article, is there charged language that's present that shows that they're not necessarily neutral? Okay, excellent. So you have just watched our Raven explanation here. Um, uh, some other useful sources um, for fact checking and for neutrality checking, I've also uh, incorporated here on slide 16. I like to use all sides uh, and I also like to use Snopes. All sides helps to provide perspectives from all sides, right? Hence the name. It kind of will give you this on any topic, right? So you can see this example here. The U.S. shoots down rockets aimed at the Kabul airport. Uh, from the left, this is their article title. So this is going to be our more liberal leaning sources. From the right, this is their more uh, conservative slant or bias on what happened. And then from the center, uh, this is going to be our more neutral source. You can see Reuters is being used here, which tends to be our, our more neutral site anyways. Right? It's at the top of our media bias uh, chart here, Reuters. So again, there's just some useful resources. Please use the slideshow today to support you on the assignment that you're going to do now. So 
The assignment's called Who Fact Checks? The Fact Checkers. I'm going to post this to Google Classroom. Everyone will get a copy for them, but I only need one copy submitted for each group. This will be a group project or a group assignment. You're going to be examining this together, talking about the credibility of sources and using my resources, uh, the Raven resource, which is linked in here, and also um, my other resources, such as the media bias chart, all sides in Snopes to examine a total of six links. So you can see the links here. This is what your assignment sheet looks like. There are six links here listed, listed on the left-hand side. I want you to determine, is it credible or is it not credible in this row? And then with your group, as you examine each uh, source of information, I want you to write a one paragraph explanation and justification on whether a source is credible or not credible. You should be detailing what adds to the source's credibility, so what makes it more credible, what takes away from the source's credibility, or what makes it less credible. You want to use the language of Raven as well, what I just went over today, within your explanation, right? And uh, in order to support you there, I even created a Raven handout, which you can uh, click in the directions there that looks like this. And it has kind of an organizer that you can use as you look through each individual article. Okay, so that is the assignment that's due for today. Um, I'm going to come back and we'll do a kind of a review on this on Thursday. And then Friday, we will have a little quiz on the topics we've covered thus far, which are says, does, annotations, reading for the main idea, uh, drafting and creating an argument, and then lastly, examining the credibility of sources. So there will be a quiz on Thursday. And then the last thing here, and I will clarify on Thursday as well, is our current events are going to be due on, or sorry, our quiz is going to be on Friday. Our current events are going to be due on um, Friday as well. We'll share those after the quiz. So Thursday, I'll come back. We'll do a review. Friday will be the quiz day. will be the current event day. If there are any questions, feel free to reach out. You can shoot me a text or shoot me an email. Otherwise, have a great class period, and I will see you all Thursday.